Thank you very much, and we'll resume business. The next item is a statement by Jean Freeman on St John's Paediatric Services update, and the Cabinet Secretary will take questions as usual following the statement. I would encourage all members who wish to ask a question to press their request to speak button as soon as possible. And I call on the Cabinet Secretary, Jean Freeman. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm grateful for the opportunity to update members on progress made on the provision of paediatric services at St John's Hospital in Livingston. I want to begin by recognising the excellence and dedication of the staff who work there to care for and serve patients and families in the surrounding communities, the support that the service has from local parents, and by emphasising my commitment to the hospital and its paediatric services. When I came to Parliament to update members last September, I gave a commitment that I would return in January to provide a further update. I informed members that I had asked the Director General for Health and Social Care and the Chief Medical Officer for Scotland to review progress by the end of January this year. I also asked the Chief Nursing Officer for Scotland to liaise with NHS Lothian and provide advice and support on the training and development of advanced nurse practitioners. I would like to record my gratitude to them for their support and their professional input. I will not rehearse again, Presiding Officer, the detail of why the interim service model has been implemented beyond one important point, that the decision was taken by NHS Lothian in the best interests of children and their families in the circumstances of that time. Within this interim model, the majority of children's services have been maintained at St John's. The children's ward is open from 8am to 8pm, seven days a week, providing a short-stay paediatric assessment service, with the paediatric ward remaining open for day surgery activity, as well as planned day case procedures and programmed investigations. The paediatric outpatient services, neonatal services and community child health services have all been unaffected. The assessment unit has seen around 3,560 children since July 2017, and there have been over 2,555 planned investigation unit attendances. The emergency department continues to see over 11,000 attendances each year, and outpatient clinics have seen over 4,000 new and review patients. The board has evolved the interim model since it was first implemented, and that has seen a drop in the number of children who have been transferred but not admitted to the Royal Hospital for Sick Children in Edinburgh. When the interim model was introduced in July 2017, the average figure was 12 children a month. Since March 2018, the average has been four, reflecting more confident triaging of patients. Additionally, although the original plan was for children to be redirected to the Royal Hospital for Ch Sick Children at weekends, the board has maintained a daytime weekend rota on all but three weekends from July 2017 to date. A wide range of children's services continue to be available at St John's and the vast majority of children who require services locally receive them at St John's. But I am acutely aware of how important the reinstatement of the full inpatient service is to the local community. I met with a group of parents and Ms Constance on the 29th of November last year, where I heard firsthand about their personal experiences at St John's and of the excellent care their children received in the inpatient unit. I heard of the dedication of staff to the service and of their willingness to go above and beyond to provide care for the local population. I am grateful to all parents who attended for their openness and I understand the anxiety and share the concern felt by members and the local community to have the service fully reinstated. The Royal College follow-up report to the board in 2017 reiterated that its preferred option remained a 24-hour model, reflecting the population projections for West Lothian. In turn, the board has confirmed its ad absolute commitment to the reinstatement of this 24-7 model through discussions with Paul Gray, Dr Calderwood and Professor McQueen. The board has continued to work to develop and deliver that 24-7 service, but one that is safe and sustainable. This requires a staffing rota that ensures resilience to sick leave and any other short notice reductions in staff availability. It requires that the majority of shifts be filled by permanent staff so that rotas can be planned for six month periods. And it requires a model 
that equates to having two tiers of trained staff to look after the children of West Lothian overnight that is consultant paediatricians supported by a second full rota of other medical and nursing staff. The NHS Lothian Paediatric Programme Board met on the 9th of January when two interim options to enhance paediatric service provision were considered. The options were <clears throat> to reopen the inpatient ward for four nights a week, Monday to Friday, or to extend the opening hours of the short stay unit for, to 10 o'clock on midnight, seven nights a week. The programme board undertook assessments of both options in the context of the full 24-7 service reopening in October this year, meaning that these interim options would be required for no more than six to seven months. What emerged from the assessments was a clear preference for the reopening of the 24-hour inpatient service Monday to Thursday from the 18th of March. On the re remaining three days, Friday to Sunday, the assessment unit will continue to be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. This is achievable because of improved medical and nursing staff numbers. From a nursing position, the ward will be fully staffed overnight for four nights a week, Monday to Thursday, with a paediatric nurse in the emergency department for the remaining three nights, Friday to Sunday, as is the current arrangement. NHS Lothian currently have three advanced uh, nurse pra paediatric nurse practitioners in post, two are already contributing to the out-of-hours rota, and one is expected to contribute to the rota from March. This is an improvement on the position in September when only one uh, advanced paediatric nurse practitioner was supporting the rota. Of the three additional APNPs recruited last year, two will be ready to contribute to the rota from October and another will be available in 2020. NHS Lothian expects that the improved staffing position will support their commitment to reopening the inpatient unit fully in October 2019. The programme board felt that the reopening of the unit four nights a week would significantly enhance the service delivered at St John's through a reduction in transfers to the Royal Hospital for sick children. Over the last 18 months, an average of 1.6 children a day have been transferred from St John's to the RHSC. The board would expect most of these children to be admitted to the St John's unit over the four nights it is open. There are, in addition, an average of four children who are transferred uh, to the RHSC but not admitted, and the board expects that most of these children would stay at St John's. The board will monitor the arrangements and keep activity under review. It is also felt that the four-night interim arrangement would improve further recruitment efforts as it demonstrates the board's commitment to fully reinstate the 24-7 inpatient service from October. The board will go back out to recruitment for the two consultant posts, which were not filled after their efforts in the autumn of last year. Advanced nurse practitioner posts will also continue to be advertised. NHS Lothian remains committed to, where possible, over-recruit to, to both areas in order to build resilience and to mitigate the risks associated with the impact of sickness or any other absences or long-term leave. I know that members and the local community are anxious to know when the full 24-7 service will be reinstated, and I understand that. I believe the board's decision to reopen the paediatric ward for 24 hours, four nights, Monday to Thursday, is welcome, and I hope it provides assurance to members and families that the full reinstatement of the inpatient service is on track to happen in October. The board's chief executive has sought to assure me that reinstatement of the full 24-7 paediatric service has the full commitment of the board and will continue to receive the highest level of priority. As I said in September, that too is and remains my commitment. We will continue to act as we have done to provide assistance and support to the board, monitor progress and work towards that delivery of 24-7 paediatric inpatient services at St John's from October this year. That remains my commitment and I hope members see the progress to date as further assurance of that. Thank you. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Could I encourage all members who wish to ask a question to press their request to speak buttons? Anna Colin Miles Briggs.
Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advanced uh, sight of her statement today. And the downgrading which we've uh, been discussing today is specifically uh, for families in Livingston, I think, key. Because we have now seen on three separate occasions in 2012, 2015 and 17 services removed. And local families, I think, across West Lothian will rightly be cynical about the latest SNP promises. The main staffing concerns which are outlined in your statement point towards the summer months, which are traditionally very difficult to staff. So can I ask whether these steps on recruitment will be sustainable? Because that will only be clear, I think, from your statement in the summer of 2020. And how will the Cabinet Secretary actually guarantee that these proposals are sustainable going forward? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, um, thank you uh, to Mr Briggs for... Uh his uh, response and for that question can I make it absolutely clear we are not talking about promises here we're talking about an absolute commitment and since September I have done exactly what I said I would do and that is look to improve the existing service on the road towards full 24-7 opening and we are on track and I've returned uh, to this chamber to report on that and I'm disappointed that it is not particularly welcomed certainly from these benches over here how will I guarantee that it is sustainable and that it remains on track I will do that with the professional judgment and the guidance of the Royal College and of that paediatric programme board who themselves are committed to ensure there is a sustainable service. It would have been all too easy, presiding officer, to come here with quick fixes in September, but quick fixes were not sustainable. There is no point in making promises to the parents that I met or to any other parents in West Lothian that I am not convinced I can keep. I have kept them so far and I intend to keep them right through until October and beyond. Monica Lennon. I also thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement. Anything that increases provision at St John's, providing it is safe, is absolutely welcome. It does still fall short of the 24-hour consultant-led paediatric care that the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health State is needed. And we do know that over a thousand children have been transferred to Edinburgh since the out-of-hours closure in 2017, with all the extra stress and expense that that brings for families. Does the Cabinet Secretary and the Health Board have any estimates of how many more children will have to be transferred between now and October? And whilst I absolutely welcome the Cabinet Secretary's commitment that the reinstatement of the 24-7 service is of her highest priority, she will accept that families have been let down by assurances before. So can I ask what contingency plans are in place if the 24-7 care, which is so badly needed, is not in place come October? Cabinet Secretary. <clears throat> Uh, I'm grateful to Ms Lennon for her comments and, uh, I, uh, and for her welcome of the progress we've made. Uh, and I agree with her. We are not yet at the full 24-7 provision. And I completely understand that that is not only what is required, but what parents have told me very clearly uh, is what they want, and rightly so. Um, the, it is difficult to estimate exactly what difference that for four day 24 hour opening will make because as I'm sure you'll appreciate cases come in and you can't and they're not all the same uh, the board's expectation is that there will be a significant reduction uh, over those four days in the number in fact no children unless they are very sick children who would in the uh, in the full uh, course of it being open 24 7 would in those circumstances always be transferred to the royal uh, uh, the Hospital for Sick Children in Edinburgh, it estimates that very few cases in the, being admitted in that period who require the short stay, which is what the full uh, paediatric service offered prior to uh, the reduction that we've seen, that none of those children would need to be transferred. Children who require uh, longer than 24 hours or are very sick and the longer than 24 hours would take them beyond the Thursday may have to be transferred. Uh, to uh, the sick kids in uh, Edinburgh, but that will be on a case-by-case -case basis, obviously, and it is a clinical decision. Uh, but the, the previous model was, uh, by and large, children who required 24 hours admission, and obviously for those uh, four nights that will continue, uh, will, would be open to them from March. In terms of the point about um, what is the contingency plan, uh, I intend with the support of the Director General uh, and uh, Chief Executive of NHS Scotland and our Chief Medical Officer and Chief Nursing Officer uh, to keep on track with the next step of progress, both uh, when the uh, 
unit uh, moves to greater opening uh, from the 18th of March, and then the further steps in terms of recruitment and uh, advanced, nurse, advanced pediatric nurse practitioner uh, engagement uh, all the way through uh, to ensure month by month that we are making the progress we need towards October. If, I, if it looks to me at any point uh, that that is not likely to happen, and at this stage, remember, we've got the Pediatric Board's assurance that they can make the October date, and we've got the Royal College's support for the option appraisal and the work that they're doing. But if at any stage uh, advice comes to me that suggests that that may not be possible, then I would, uh, you have my assurance, that I would act quickly to try and see if there is ways that we can get it back on track. And you have my assurance, of course, that I would keep this chamber advised of that. Alison Johnson to be followed <coughs> by Alex Crow Hamilton. Um, thank you. The Cabinet Secretary, I know, um, appreciates the, the extra travel, the stress and the expense that has been caused uh, to families who've, who've been required to travel to the sick children's. Now, I am pleased that we are seeing some progress, but I'm sure none of us are, are satisfied as yet, including the Cabinet Secretary herself. And I'd, I'd like to know if the, the hard-learned lessons of St John's will help inform the legislation that's currently going through Parliament with regards to health and, you know, health care in Scotland. And... Does the Cabinet Secretary consider that over-recruitment over should become the norm so that we're never in a position like this again? Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. Um, I'm grateful to Ms Johnson for her comments. Of course, um, the experience at St John's, as elsewhere in our health service, all goes to inform uh, the propositions that we've put in terms of the draft legislation uh, before uh, Parliament uh, before the committee and the amendments that we've brought in our position on those other amendments. So, of course, uh, uh, St John's is part of that mix. In terms of over-recruitment, um, over-recruitment works where a board uh, understands and can demonstrate that if they are over-recruited in one area, they can nonetheless make good use of those skills and expertise elsewhere and that they have a sustainable model that does take account not only of planned events like holidays, but also unplanned events uh, like sickness uh, and uh, long-term leave. Uh, so over-recruitment is not uh, particularly new uh, in the St John's case. It is used elsewhere in our health service. And in terms of our overall discussions with chief executives of health boards, directors of nursing, medical directors and others, then it remains a feature of those discussions. Uh, to ensure that where it is appropriate, then it is the approach that our board adopts. Alex Cole hamilton to be followed by Angela Constance. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I, I welcome today's statement and uh, assure the Cabinet Secretary of the full support of these benches in seeing that service uh, re-established to 24-7 coverage. Um, the Cabinet Secretary referenced the fact that there has been a drop-off in the number of cases referred to the sick kids, something like 12 to 4 per week. Um, is, does she share my anxiety, though, that this may be symptomatic of an understanding that the service doesn't exist at St John's to sustain children in this way, so people are going straight to the sick kids, and as such isn't a reflection of demand on the service. And secondly, if re-establishing the service as a 24-7 pr uh, provision hinges on the uh, uh, appointment of trained APMs or two or three a trained APMs, given the margins are so tight, uh, will this be impacted by staff sickness and absence? And in that event, are there banks or locums that can be drawn down upon to relieve the pressure? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I'm grateful to Mr. Cole Hamilton for his question. I have no evidence that the drop-off in uh, the transfer uh, from uh, St. John's to Edinburgh is a result of anyone going straight to St. John's, um, uh, but actually is the result of, as I said, more confident triaging of patients uh, at St. John's as, as people uh, uh, understand better what uh, they're there to do in terms of the particular services that they can offer within the restricted hours uh, that it was currently operating in. And that, of course, will translate itself now into uh, that longer uh, operational period uh, for the children's ward at St John's. In terms of tight margins, um, that's actually the point about why we had to do the work to get to this point in order to be able to open 24 hours over those four nights, um, but no longer at this point. And that is precisely to ensure that what we have is a sustainable model. And a sustainable model is one that is built on taking account not only of uh, rotas and planned leave and planned holidays, but also, as far as it is possible to do this, 
based on the evidence you have uh, overall in terms of uh, how your staff numbers work out, uh, unexpected periods of inevitably unexpected periods of sickness and periods where sick leave is lengthy. So at the moment, what the board uh, with our support has done and the paediatric board, and it is in line with how the Royal College wanted us to progress towards, as Ms Lennon said quite rightly, uh, their support for a 24 seven model. Uh, all of that is in line with that progression to ensure that we have that sustainable model. And therefore, when we open uh, for those uh, four nights in the week, uh, we do not have to close it because somebody uh, goes off sick. That's partly how the model's been built. It's also what sits behind the proposition that the board has uh, been delivering on uh, to, to, as we described it, over-recruit. Angela Constance to be followed by Gordon Lindhurst. <coughs> Thank you, President Officer. As the constituency MSP, uh, I can indeed say that this is a, a very positive stride forward. It is not the final destination, but good progress nonetheless that will be welcomed by West Lothian parents of school-aged children, including those in this chamber and indeed uh, in the public gallery. But what parents will want to know, particularly those that Ms Freeman has met and who've led a very positive campaign, what they will want to know in detail is how the Cabinet Secretary and her team will continue to ensure that NHS Lothian do not rest, do not backslide and do not take their foot off the gas until our much-loved first-class children's ward returns to a 24-7 service, given that it's not just the preferred option of the wider West Lothian community, but also, crucially, the Royal College of Paediatricians and Maternal Health. Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I, I'm grateful uh, to Ms Constance um, for uh, her support and for uh, her comments. And can I take this opportunity uh, personally to welcome any parents from West Lothian who may be in the gallery uh, and who I may have already met. Uh, as I've already said, um, the, the questions that Ms uh, Constance raises are of course very pertinent ones because that is in what's everyone's minds and entirely understandably so. Uh, as I've already said, we will continue to act as we have done to provide assistance and support to the board to monitor progress very cl closely and work towards that delivery of 24-7 paediatric inpatient services uh, at St John's from October this week. The involvement we have had and will continue to have with the board and the chair of the paediatric programme board uh, with our Director General uh, for Health and Social Care and with the Chief Medical Officer and the Chief Nursing Officer w since September last year will continue. It has proved to be very helpful and it will continue right through. I've asked uh, the DG, uh, Dr Calderwood and Professor McQueen to maintain that involvement, to keep me uh, regularly briefed on progress, to alert me if at any point it looks like we may be going off track uh, so that I can be uh, personally assured that we are do putting in place all the steps that we know now need to be put in place in order to return from October this year to that full inpatient service at St John's. Gordon Linders to be followed by Gordon MacDonald. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Is the Cabinet Secretary able to tell us what effect partial closure has had on the ambulance service and has any assessment been made on ambulance response times and costs to the service? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I should say, I'm grateful to Mr Lindhurst for that question. I should say, uh, just in uh, response to that, that the ambulance service uh, has been consulted on this um, uh, proposed improvement and are supportive of that. Uh, there has uh, been, as I think we mentioned in September, uh, additional payment made by NHS Lothian uh, to the ambulance service uh, to uh, cover any additional costs that they have had to meet. Uh, in the period and where that continues through to October, uh, that will uh, continue to be met by NHS Lothian. The ambulance service, along with other referring services, uh, will be notified uh, well in advance of that 18th of March date so that they uh, can ensure that their uh, uh, staff are briefed and know uh, where they should be uh, taking patients, uh, as indeed uh, parents and uh, staff at St John's will themselves be briefed well in advance of that date. In terms of uh, ambulance uh, response times, uh, from the data that I have seen overall of ambulance response times, 
Uh, I have not identified any dip in response times that may be attributed to St John's, but I'm perfectly happy to, uh, if it would be helpful uh, to Mr Lindhurst, to look further into that specific area of detail, uh, data and advise him uh, of my conclusions from that uh, in due course. Gordon MacDonald to be followed by Kezia Dugdale. Uh, I welcome the commitment that full reinstatement of the 24-7 paediatric service from October is receiving the highest level of priority. But can the Cabinet Secretary detail how she will both scrutinise and support the work of the Paediatric Programme Board? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I'm grateful to Mr. Uh, Mr. MacDonald uh, for that. Uh, and I understand um, from members their concern to make sure that um, whilst progress has been made, that nobody takes their foot off the pedal. Uh, and I think in addition to my consciousness of uh, members' uh, concern around that, I am very conscious that parents of West Lothian will be uh, scrutinising to make sure that we deliver on uh, the final part of the commitment that I have made. Uh, as I said, uh, I have asked uh, Professor McQueen, Dr Calderwood and the uh, DG for Health and Social Care, Chief Executive of NHS Scotland, to continue their active involvement. And it has been active involvement, presiding officer. It's not been arm's length or distant. Uh, their active involvement with the programme board, with NHS Lothian's chief executive, uh, and we have made sure that at that senior level in NHS Lothian, there is that uh, proactive interest in how th these matters progress. And all of that will be reported regularly to me with, as I said before, the commitment I have made that if at any point it appears to me that it looks to be going off track, then I will take steps to intervene as far as I am able to bring it back on track uh, but also to ensure that uh, members of this chamber are kept up to date with our progress. Kenneth Dugdale to be followed by Emma Harper. Thank you, President Officer. This is welcome news in West Lothian and indeed for any family with children that have ever required hospital attention. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware, though, that there will be a degree of scepticism about this announcement given the hospital has opened and closed three times since 2012. So in that context, can I ask for her assurance that there will be a 24-hour paediatric service at St John's Hospital for as long as she's Health Secretary? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, uh, right. Um, I, it was the final part. Ms Dugdale, it threw me off a wee bit for as long as I was a Health Secretary. Um, I'm grateful to you for uh, your question and for your support. Uh, and yes, you do have my assurance of that. Uh, I made that commitment in September. I fully support a 24-7 inpatient paediatric service at St John's. I understand that that is needed now, that in terms of the Royal College's work, it, the need for that is absolutely reaffirmed by the expansion in the number of families, uh, welcome families who are now uh, moving into and will continue, I hope, to move into uh, West Lothian and benefit uh, from that area's uh, significant uh, advantages and uh, uh, good uh, standard of living. Uh, and therefore, uh, I said in September that I would work with all those individuals that I have uh, set out. I'd bring in that Chief Medical Officer uh, professionalism and experience, the Chief Nursing Officer, Director General. We'd work with uh, the Paediatric Programme Board. We'd work to the Royal College's uh, commitments. Uh, and we have done so in order to reach a next step towards that full 24-7 opening in October. That is my commitment. It remains that. And for as long as I am Health Secretary, I will continue uh, to want and to work towards sustaining a full 24-7 paediatric inpatient service at St John's. Emma Harper to be followed by Brian Whittle. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary has been very definitive in her response to Miles Briggs about sustainability of the service. Can I just again clarify whether the Board have sought to provide the Cabinet Secretary with assurances that the current staff and model will be implemented at St John's Paediatric Ward will create a sustainable solution to ensure patient safety and will avoid any future disruptions to children's services? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I'm grateful uh, to Ms Harper. Um, Ms Harper probably knows better than just about any of the rest of us in this chamber about the importance of a sustainable rota in our health service that takes account uh, of all the issues that I've already uh, set out in my answer. And I'm sure that she also uh, agrees with me about the significant value of advanced paediatric nurse practitioners, advanced nurse practitioners uh, as a whole uh, across our health service. That is why we worked in September 
to uh, recruit additional advanced nurse practitioners, to begin to bring them into uh, the rota, as we said. You, you'll know that it takes a period of time to do that. We have now reached a stage where, the, with their engagement and with the uh, other consultant and medical provision engagement that we already have, the rota is sustainable for that four-night uh, opening, 24-7 uh, opening uh, of the inpatient ward at St John's. The next step is to bring on, is to continue to uh, look to recruit two more consultants, uh, to continue with the additional recruitment of advanced paediatric nurse practitioners, to bring those who are currently uh, going through that training uh, into the rota at the point where they are clinically safe to do so. And all of that worked through takes us to a point where we can say that it will be 24 seven uh, opening of that inpatient service from October. Brian Whittle to be followed by David Torrance. Uh, thank you, Presenting Officer. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary how she will ensure that adequate resources will be made available to St John's to make sure this crucial service uh, overcomes the pressure on the staff that caused the initial restrictions in the first place? Cabinet Secretary. Well, in, in truth, my understanding is that it wasn't a resource issue in the terms of pound notes that uh, led to uh, the situation that we are now working so hard uh, to resolve uh, and to uh, ensure it is sustainable going forward. Uh, but it was a staffing issue, and yes, there is obviously a connection there in terms of resources. But the resources are clearly there uh, in NHS Lothian uh, and will be there in 1920, depending, of course, on what this Parliament does with our current draft budget, in order to deliver on these commitments. I don't come to this chamber making commitments that I don't believe I have the resource uh, to deliver. Uh, so, uh, depending, as I said, what happens with our draft budget in due course, uh, I have the resources to deliver, NHS Lothian will have the resources to deliver, and co consequently St John's will have the resources to deliver. David Torrance to be followed by Mary Fee. Thank you, President Officer. Does the Cabinet Secretary share my concern that the end of free movement of people following Brexit would be harmful to future recruitment drives for clinical staff across the health boards in Scotland? Briefly, Cabinet Secretary. <coughs> well, I do share those concerns. Let me just give uh, Mr Torrance in the Chamber the benefit of a couple of uh, quotes from uh, more than me, those who actually work uh, and represent people in our health service. BMA Council Chair said the only thing that is certain is how disastrous leaving the EU will be for the NHS, its workforce, its patients and the health of the country. Uh, and Donna Kinnear from the uh, Royal College of Nursing said that our healthcare system is fast losing its most, most important asset, its staff. We already know that uh, staff are uh, leaving our health service who are EU nationals. And we also know, I think, from memory that 78% of those EU, nation, EU nationals who are doctors uh, in, our, uh, in the United Kingdom uh, who were asked said that they found the UK government's assurances deeply unconvincing and just over 35% of them uh, plan to leave. So these are serious problems, serious matters that we have to try and address in how we take forward our health service, but more importantly, how we take forward our country. May I be followed by Colin Beattie. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary has said that there are plans to recruit two new consultant posts which were unfilled at a recruitment round last year. What additional steps are the Board taking to fill these posts? Does the Cabinet Secretary have confidence the posts will be filled before the service opens in October? And what impact will not filling the posts have on the service? Cabinet Secretary. So, um, the, the Board is, is uh, uh, going out again uh, to advertise for those posts. Um, the Board believes, and indeed it was a, a point made uh, to me by the parents that I met, that actually the more we can do to improve um, the uh, provision of paediatric uh, inpatient services in St John's, the more attractive that becomes. Uh, in terms of people looking to apply and, and to being recruited. Uh, and so we are hopeful that this next step that I've announced will assist uh, in that recruitment exercise, uh, along with our absolute commitments that we've restated. But I think the move to uh, uh, the four-night opening uh, makes good uh, on those commitments, uh, will in itself encourage uh, uh, individuals to think seriously about coming to work in what is an excellent hospital providing very high quality care. So the board will go back out to ad, uh, advertisement uh, and seek to recruit in those posts. But in anticipation that there was a difficulty, uh, post a difficulty in the autumn recruitment where um, two, uh, the two posts were not filled, uh, the board looked to 
uh, with the Paediatric Programme Board and with uh, the support of the Royal College, looked to realign what its model might look like. And that has resulted in some of the additional advanced paediatric nurse practitioner recruitment that I uh, spoke about in my statement. So uh, we continue to look for those two consultant posts. So they are important for the consultant rota, but in terms of going to the full 24-7 model, the additional steps I set out in my statement, uh, including the additional uh, advanced nurse practitioner roles above what I'd said in September, helps to take us towards that sustainable model. And Colin Beattie. The Cabinet Secretary has outlined some of the challenges being faced in recruiting staff at present. Can she outline how NHS Lothian figures today compare with staffing figures in 2007? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you uh, to Mr Beattie for that. Uh, in terms of NHS Lothian, uh, since 2007, consultant numbers have risen by 54%. Emergency medicine consultants have risen by 252.7%. Qualified nurses and midwives up by 96 And allied health professionals, professionals up by 18.8%. So overall, the staff numbers in NHS Lothian have gone up in total across all of those uh, by 14.8%. And we continue to seek to recruit in order to deliver the quality service that uh, families in, in West Lothian and elsewhere across Scotland deserve to have. Thank you very much. And that concludes our statement on St John's Paediatric Services. We're going to move on to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion 15609 in the name of Christina McKelvey on a connected Scotland. The Scottish Government's strategy for tackling social, is social isolation and loneliness. And could I invite all members who wish to contribute in this debate to press their request to speak buttons as soon as possible. 